In this Blender tutorial, I'll show you how to create this procedural rock material. Now this tutorial is actually the second part in my rock generator geometry nodes tutorial, so if you'd like to go ahead and watch that tutorial and learn how to create a geometry nodes rock generator, you can find the link to that tutorial in the description. So in this video, I'm going to be creating this procedural rock material, and we're going to be adding that to the rock. So this material has many customizable values, like the overall scale of the material. We also have some different colors for the rock, so color one and two. And right now they're gray colors, but for example, if you wanted it to be more like a brown rock, you could just change these colors and make it kind of like a brown color. And then there's also this edge lightness, and so that's going to be that lightness there on the edges of the rock. So I could maybe make this like a brown color as well. And one thing to note about the edge lightness is that it will not work in the EV rendering engine. So if you're using the EV rendering engine, you just won't be able to see the edge lightness, so I would recommend using the cycles. And then there's also this noise detail to change the detail of that noise. There's also this noise roughness value, and then there is the roughness of the material, so you could make it very shiny if you want the rock to look a kind of wet or shiny. And then we have the noise bump scale, so that is just the noise of the actual bump there, which is going into the normal. And then we have the noise bump strength, and then we also have the detailed bump strength to give it some really small detail. And then you can see right over here on on this side panel, this is the Geometry Nodes Rock Generator, which I created in the previous tutorial. Again, link is in the description if you'd like to check out that video, but there's some different settings like the random shape and the rock edge size and the edge crease just to change the look of the rock. And if you'd like to help support the channel and purchase the material, or if you'd also like to purchase the Geometry Nodes Rock Generator, then you can find the product links in the description. And if you'd like to purchase all of my procedural materials, then you can definitely check out my Ultimate Blender Procedural Material Pack. And to learn how to create any of my procedural materials, definitely check out my Blender Procedural Material Tutorial Playlist. All the links are in the description. All right, so I've opened up my Rock Generator Geometry Nodes Blender file, and I'm first gonna show you a few more things that I've done to the 3D viewport, like the lighting and things like that. So here in the 3D scene, obviously I have my rock generator and you can learn how to create this rock by watching the tutorial. Now I also added this sunlight here to get some nice lighting. So I added the sunlight and kind of pointed it over in this direction and I set the strength to six of this sunlight. And then also to get some nice realistic lighting and reflections over here on the world properties, I added in this autumn field 1K HDRI. So this is a free HDRI from polyhaven.com. I'll have the link in the description if you'd like to download Download it, and I downloaded the 1K HDR version. And then also I am going to be using the Cycles rendering engine. So over here on the render properties, I'm using Cycles because I am going for realism. And then if you want to make the world background transparent, then you can go right down here to the Film tab, and you can check mark this transparent button, and that way the world lighting will still light the scene, but it'll just be transparent so it's not quite as distracting. And then also you can open up the color management here, and I changed the view transform of Filmic, and I made the look very high contrast to pop out the colors and make everything more contrasty and saturated. All right, so I'm in the shading workspace. So I have the 3D viewport right over here and I'm in the rendered mode. And then I have the shader editor right over here. So I'll just click on new to add a new material. And I'll just rename this to procedural rock material. And then I'm also going to be using the node wrangler add-on to preview the different nodes. So if you don't have the node wrangler enabled, you can click on edit and go to the preferences. And in the user preferences, if you go over here to add-ons and go to the search, you can search for the node wrangler and just enable the node wrangler. So it's built in a blender and I'll show you how to use the node wrangler add-on in the video. So I want to start by adding some noise to the material. So I'll go to the add menu and I'm going to search for a noise texture. Let's drop the noise texture here. And with the noise texture selected, I can press control T and that is going to add the texture coordinate and mapping nodes. And then let's also control shift and select the noise texture. And that's going to use the node wrangler. So if you control shift and select different nodes, that'll preview the nodes on the object. So now we can see the noise texture. Now I want to use the object coordinates because the object coordinates will place the texture on the object more evenly. So let's put the object into the vector of the mapping, and then we can change some of the noise texture settings. So I'm going to turn the scale pretty high to like a 55, and I'll turn the detail to the max of 15. And then this roughness here, I'll turn to like a 0.8 because I do want a bit more roughness. Now I want to make this a bit more contrasty, so I'll go to the add menu, and I'm going to search for a color ramp, and we'll put that after the noise texture. So I can now drag the white tab and the black tab together, and you can see if they are closer, everything's going to be more contrasty. So I'll drag the black tab to about there and the white tab to about there, so you can see how that texture is looking. Now I also want to add another noise texture, so let's select the noise texture and the color ramp, and I'm going to bring them down. 
And then I can press Control Shift D. Control Shift D will duplicate the nodes, but keep the wires plugged up. And I can Control Shift and select this color ramp to preview it. And then let's change some of the noise texture settings. So I'll turn the scale to like a 10, and then I'll leave the detail at 15 and the roughness to 0.8, but I'll leave the other settings how they are. Now I do want to change the color ramp. So I'm going to drag the black tab over a bit because I want more of the black values. So I'll drag the black tab to about there and the white tab to about there. So now you can see we have another texture. So we have both of these textures, but I want to mix them together. So I'm going to drag these nodes back and to mix them together, I can go to the add menu and I can search for a mix color node. And let's just stick this here. So I want this top color ramp to go into color B and then this bottom color ramp, that color is going to go into A. Now if we drag the factor, that is going to blend between both of them. And I'm going to turn the factor to like 8.7 so that you can kind of see both of them and they're mixed together. So now I want to create the different colors for the actual texture. So I'm going to duplicate the mix with shift D and I can drop it here after this one. And then this mix result that can go into the factor and the factor will determine what parts of the material will be color A and what parts will be color B. So I can now make the colors for A and B. So for color A, I'm going to make this a very, very dark gray color. And if you want to use the exact same color that I'm using, you can click on the color and you can go to the hex value and you can punch in two, six times. And then for color B, this is going to be fully black. So now you can see we have a nice dark texture there for the rock. Now I like to keep my nodes nicely organized. So I'm going to box select all these nodes. I'll press control J to join them together into a frame. And the frame is just a nice way to organize the nodes. And I can press F2 to add a label. And I'm just going to call all this noise. And then I can also box select these here, these two nodes, the texture coordinate and the mapping. I can press Control J to join them together into a frame, and I can press F2 to add a label, and I'll just call this mapping, just to keep the nodes really nicely organized. And this here is going to be the base color. Now I also want to create that edge lightness, because I want the edges to kind of be a bit lighter, and it really pops out the rock and makes the rock look better. So to do this, I'll go to the Add menu, and I'm going to search for the geometry node. So let's drop this here, and then we can also go to the add menu and we can search for a color ramp to make the geometry more contrasty. So I can control shift and select the color ramp to preview it. And then we can take the pointiness value and we'll put this into the color ramp. Now you can see here on the edges, the edges look a little bit lighter. And to see that better, let's drag these values together so they're more contrasty. Now two things to know about the geometry pointiness value is that if you are in the solid view or the material preview, you won't be able to see the pointiness value. And also if you're using Blender EV, the pointiness value won't work. So you need to make sure you're in the rendered mode and also make sure you're using cycles render to preview the pointiness value. So I'm going to drag the black tab kind of to about here and then the white tab to about there. So the white or the lightness is mostly just on those edges, but it's okay if there's a little bit kind of on the surface. Now I want to make this look a bit more random and noisy, so I'm going to go to the add menu and I'm going to search for another noise texture. Let's drop this up here, and then I want to use the same object coordinates, so I'll plug the vector of the mapping into the vector of the noise texture. And then we can take this color ramp, we can press shift D to duplicate it to make it more contrasty, and let's plug the factor into the vector of the color ramp, and I can control shift and select the color ramp to preview it. So we can now change the settings of the noise texture. So the scale, I'm going to turn to like a 9.5. Let's also make it very detailed. So I'll turn the detail to the max of 15. And the roughness, I'll turn to like a 0.63. So there's more roughness. And I'll leave the other settings how they are. So we now have these two textures and I want to mix them together. And I want to make this noise make the light edges a bit more noisy. So to do that, I'll go to the add menu and I'm going to search for a mix color node so we can mix colors together. Let's drop this here and I want the top one to actually be going into color B and then this bottom color ramp that can go into color A and I can control shift and select the mix to preview it. Now I'm going to click on the mix here and I'm going to change this to the linear light. So right down here, just choose the linear light. And then I can drag the factor around to blend it together. And I'm going to turn the factor to like a 0.4. Now it's not really looking that great right now. And that is because this noise texture is way too contrasty. So I'm going to drag this out so it's less contrasty. And also I'll drag the white tab a bit something like that. So now you can see there's just a bit of noise here and there kind of mixed in with those light areas. So I can box select these nodes here. I can join them together into a frame and I can add a label to the frame and I can call this edge lightness. 
So I now want to mix the edge lightness into the base color. So to do that, I'm going to duplicate this mix node, and then I'll control shift and select it to preview it. Now this original mix here, this result is going to go into color A. And I can control shift and select the mix to preview it. And then for the factor, that's going to be the linear light, because the factor is going to determine what parts are going to be A and what parts are going to be B. And so the light and black values are going to determine those colors. So we're going to use this as a mask. So we'll put the result into the factor. And then again, control shift and select the mix to preview it. So now color B, this is going to be the color of the light edges. So I can make this kind of like a light gray. And if you want to use the same light gray color that I'm using for those edges on color B, the hex value is going to be 595959. All right, so I can box select these nodes and join them together into a frame. And I can add a label and I'm going to call these base color again, just to keep the nodes nicely organized, because these two nodes are controlling the base color. So let's drag these nodes back here. And because this is the base color, we can put the result into the base color. And then I can control shift and select the principled shader to preview it. Now I also want to change the roughness because you can see this rock is way too shiny right now. But I want there to be some difference in the roughness so that some parts are more rough and other parts are more shiny. So we're going to take the noise mix. Let's take the result and we can put that into the roughness. But I want to be able to control how rough it is overall because it still looks a bit too shiny. So I'll go to the add menu and we're going to search for a color ramp and let's put the color ramp between the mix and the roughness. So just stick it there. And then I can change some of the settings. So for this color ramp, if the values are lighter, they're going to be more rough. But if they're darker, they're going to be more shiny. So rock is usually pretty rough unless it's wet. So I'm going to make this a very light gray here, here on the color ramp so it is more rough. And if you want to use the same light color I'm using, the hex value will be D3, D3, D3. And then this other color ramp color here, that's just going to be fully white. Now, later on in the custom node group, I want to be able to control the roughness. So we can change the light and dark values to control the roughness. So if I just go to the add menu and search for the hue saturation value, I can drop this here after the color ramp. And this value is going to make it lighter or darker. So that'll control the roughness. So let's box select these nodes and we'll join them together into a frame. And then I can add a label and we'll just call this roughness. Now, if you look closely at the rock, you can see it's kind of smooth and it doesn't look very bumpy. And so I want to add some surface bump. So to do that, I'll go to the add menu and I'm going to search for another noise texture. So let's drop the noise texture here. And then I want to use the same mapping because I want to use the object coordinates. So we'll take the mapping vector and we'll put that into the vector, the noise texture. And I can control shift and select the noise texture to preview it. And let's change the different settings. So I'm going to turn the scale up to like a 10 and we'll turn the detail to the max of 15. But then the other settings all keep how they are. So we can now take the factor and we can put that into the normal to give it some surface bump. And I can control shift and select the principal shader to preview it. Now you can see there's some weird shading issues and that is because we need to convert the black and white data into normal data that the shader can use. So to do this we'll go to the add menu and I'm going to search for a bump node and we'll stick the bump node here after the noise texture and then we want the factor to actually be going into the height value to convert it to bump data. So now you can see the rock looks very bumpy but it is a bit too strong right now so let's turn the bump strength down to like a 0.2 so it's not quite as bumpy. Now I want to add another layer of bump and that is going to be a more detailed bump from this noise. So we can select the bump node, we can press shift D to duplicate it and drop it here. So the normal is going through the normal. So we now have this extra height value that we can add data into. And that is how we can mix multiple bump maps together. So let's take this mix result and I can put that into the height value of the bump. And then I can control shift and select it to preview it. You can see that is what it's doing. So here's the first one. And then here's the second one. And this one, let's turn the strength up to like a 0.3. So it's a bit stronger. So I can control shift and select the principled shader. And now if I zoom in here, you can see there is a nice level of detail there on the surface bump. All right, and that is it for the procedural material. So I'm now going to show you how to join this material together into a custom node group. So let's box select all the nodes except the material output, and I can press Control G to join it together into a node group. Now if I press the tab key with the node group selected, that is going to go in and out of the node group. So let's drag the node group over here to the material output and I can drag it out to make it bigger. And then if I copy the procedural rock material name, I can paste it here in the node group. 
So let's hit the tab key to go into the node group. And if you press the N key to open up the side panel, you can click here on group. And there's going to be the interface here with the BSDF. Now I want to double click on this and I want to rename it to shader because I think shader is better. So now if we go outside of the node group, you can see it's just called a shader. So let's go back into the node group. And if I go over here to the left side, we have this group input and we can plug values up to the group input. And then that way we'll be able to control those values outside of the node group. So the first value that I want to control is the overall size of the material. So this mapping node is plugged up to all of the textures. And so we can add the scale value into the extra socket and then it'll control the scale. So we'll put the scale into the extra socket. Now, if you click on the scale here, you can see that it is three different values, but I instead just want to have one value to control the scale. So let's click on the type here and we're going to change it to float instead. And float is going to make it one single value. Now we need to turn the default value back to one and then if we go outside of the node group we need to turn this scale back to one and that will now control the size of the material so let's go back into the node group now the next values that i want to control all the colors so let's take the group input and i can drag it way over here above the base color and we have these different colors here so we'll put a into the extra socket and b into the extra socket and then here i can double click on these to rename these and i'm going to rename this one to rock color one and then this one here color b that is going to be rock color two and then this mix here that is going to be the edge lightness so we'll put b into the extra socket here and i can double click on this to rename it and i can rename it to edge lightness let's select the group input and i can drag it way back here down underneath these noise so for the noise here we have these detail levels and the roughness values and I want to be able to control those outside of the node group so we'll put the detail into the extra socket and then this detail here we can actually put this into the same exact socket so because they're going into the same socket this one socket will control both detail levels and then I'll double click on this to rename it and I'll rename it to noise detail and I want to do the same thing for the roughness so we'll put the roughness into the extra socket there and then this noise roughness put that into the same exact socket and I can double click on this and I'll rename it to noise roughness and then I want to control the roughness of the material so let's drag the group input way over here actually just drag it kind of down here and here we have the roughness and this value here is going to make it lighter or darker so that'll control the roughness so I'll put the value into the extra socket here and I can just rename this to roughness and then finally I want to control the bump strengths First, I want to box select these nodes and join them together into a frame with control J and I can press F2 to add a label and I'll just call that bump. So we have this strength value here and that's just like the noise bump strength. So we'll put the strength into the extra socket there and then I can double click on this and I'll rename this one to noise bump strength. And then I also want to control the noise bump scale. So that is this scale value here. So let's put the scale into the extra socket and then this one I can rename to noise bump scale and then i actually want the noise bump scale to be above this one so i can just click and drag and then drop it here and that'll put it above it and then the last one that i want to control is this bump strength here so we'll put this strength into the extra socket there and then if i double click on this to rename it i want to rename it to detailed bump strength all right, let's select the group input and I can drag it back here. I can press the tab key to go outside of the node group and I'll hit the N key to close the side panel. Let's make this bigger and we can now review the final material. So we have the overall scale of the material and then we also have the different colors for the rocks. So rock color one and two, and then we also have that edge lightness. And then we have the noise detail. We also have the noise roughness. We also have the roughness of the material. So if you want the rock to look kind of shiny and wet, you could turn that down. We also have the noise bump scale. And then we also have the noise bump strength. And then finally, the detailed bump strength. So that's going to wrap it up for this tutorial. So I hope you enjoyed this and thank you for watching. And if you'd like to help support the channel and purchase the procedural rock material, you can get that on my Gumroad store and my Patreon page. And if you'd like to watch the other tutorial and learn how to create this procedural rock generator with geometry nodes, then you can find that tutorial with the link in the description. And you can also purchase the rock generator geometry nodes. Link to that will also be in the description. And if you'd like to purchase all of my procedural materials, definitely check out my ultimate blender procedural material pack and that's a pack which comes with all of my procedural materials and to learn how to create any of my procedural materials definitely check out my blender procedural material tutorial playlist but i hope you enjoyed this i hope you found it helpful and thank you for watching